Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to cover how to install resistors as quick and as painlessly as possible. I've gotten numerous questions about this. I've been meaning to do a video on this for quite some time, but again, when I show you guys how simple this is to do, and again, I am using my Rev3 Pro Solidless connectors, uh, it's, it's really, really simple. So you can see here, we're going to use terminals five and one on the connector. And of course, on these connectors, everything is uh, printed on the circuit board for easy allocation. And again, we are using flathead screws. And again, uh, flatheads naturally are going to require much less torque, I've said this in previous videos, than Phillips head. And of course, we just want to snug it up. So what I'm going to do is I already know I'm going to be using terminals 5 and 1 or 1 and 5. It's irrelevant which order you actually install the resistor. And you want to loosen up both of the terminal block screws for those terminals. Now once that's done, grab yourself a resistor. Now the biggest question is, what if I have a resistor, you know, which end do I put in first? We don't have to get into all that. Realistically, the resistor, it does not matter which end goes to what. The main thing is, is that we have full continuity and we want to accomplish this in the smoothest method, method possible. Excuse me. So you're going to pick a terminal. I picked one. And I just inserted, inserted the resistor and bottomed it out. Once that's done, I'm going to come over here with my screwdriver. See if I can get out of the way. There you go. You can see me tightening now. Very, very little pressure. Once it bottoms out, I'm going to go just a teeny bit, and you can see there's our resistor. Now what you're going to do is fold the resistor carefully over. And you're going to see that the resistor tends to come over on the opposite terminal block on the far side. It's over here. So what you're going to want to do is just center it a little bit, just add a little bit of pressure, come over a little bit, and you're done. Now what you're going to do is you're going to come back into that same terminal that we originally tightened, which was terminal 1 going to release the resistor and what you're going to have is a perfect bend that's going to mimic the opposite terminal. So I'm going to go back in and what I'm doing is taking the straight end of the resistor once again and going back into the terminal block one position that I was using before. I'm going to pivot my hand so you guys can see. Trying to keep the resistor nice and symmetrically straight. Tighten it slightly. And when I say slightly, just a little bit of pressure. Once it bottoms out, we're only looking for about 10 ounce inches of pressure, which is very little. Now you can see we've got this perfect arc here. We're going to come over here and just follow it over. And when we do that, it's going to miraculously line right up with terminal block 5. Okay? And now you can see by adding a little pressure, I just squeezed it just slightly, you're basically in a perfect position. Now what we're going to do, we're going to come over here. We're going to go into terminal block 5 because naturally we've already tightened terminal block 1. Get my hand out of the way so you guys can see. There you go. And I'm just tightening. I'm squeezing with a little bit of pressure with my thumb. You don't want to compress the resistor. The idea here is just to make sure that the resistor is seated properly. Okay, we're in and right there. And now, if you do get a little bend like I did, no worries. Straighten it up. And with a slight bit of manipulation, you've got a perfect resistor installation and it's just that simple guys okay now the finishing touch and this is what I prefer to do I use deoxid on all my conductors so again very very simple just come in touch touch and you're done um, to anybody who has not used deoxid I'm telling you right now as far as protecting your connections enhancing your connections uh, it does everything from drop in resistance to just overall your connections will last basically forever, especially if you treat it once a year with this stuff. It's amazing. Uh, again, the vial is tiny and it doesn't seem to be cheap for what you're getting, but what you have to realize is you saw the amount I actually applied. This will last easily about six months to a year. Um, once again, resistor is now installed. And you guys are good to go. And like I said, the main thing here is that we always pay attention on any electronic terminal blocks that we do not use too much pressure when we're actually working with these flathead screws. You'll see guys wrenching on them or they'll actually move the actual terminal block from how it's been soldered on its base plate. We don't want to do that. If it's soldered into a circuit board, the last thing you want to do is move anything. I prefer to use an electrical screwdriver. 
Um, you're more than welcome to use jeweler's screwdrivers for these. The main thing here again is the torque you're using and to make sure that the resistor is in. One last step I like to do, and I, I cannot emphasize enough, this should be done probably after every 10 to 20 hours of use. Go over your connections. For some reason, um, guys forget to do it. I've forgotten to do it, and now I actually do a uh, preventative maintenance thing. I've covered that with Mach 3. Pumotics has it. Um, basically, all motion control software has it. The, once you install the resistor and you finalize, take your screwdriver and slightly apply some outward pressure and see if the resistor stays in position in terms of how it's been inserted in the terminal block. Once you know that it's in there and it's properly seated, it will not move. And once again, you've completed the task and you're all set to go. So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful. Um, I've had lots and lots of questions on this, and I do apologize that I haven't gotten this done sooner, but now many of you, I think, are going to be set with this. Um, if you do have questions, require consultations or quotes, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. You'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end. I hope this has helped everyone. To my subscribers, I love you guys. Thank you all for your respect. Take care.